Okay, let's have a look at what we can do with Breeze FX in conjunction with the print layout editor in Breeze DSL, DSLR Remote Pro. Um, so we're gonna run with this basketball um, configuration that we've done and see if we can do something a little bit more interesting than just a straight up face swap. So the first thing I just wanted to touch on if you come into the F, one of your FX configurations for face swap, uh, the key thing to know here is that the image that you have uploaded here, the target image, is what will get imported into Breeze uh, into the print layout editor. So what that means is that if you have uploaded a 500 by 500 pixel square cropped image, that's what's going to come back into Breeze. So it's going to be a little bit low resolution. If you upload something more like a 3600 by 2400 landscape image, that's what you'll get back into Breeze and it's going to be a little bit more higher resolution. Now, of course, keep in mind that the larger the image, uh, the slower the processing is going to be. So there is a little bit of a balancing act there. Um, typically, you'd be probably trying to size your artwork as close to pos possible as to the finished output on your print. So let's jump into DSLR Remote Pro and see uh, what we can do with this print layout. So I'm going to come in here. Um, I was playing around earlier. I'm going to delete a few of these things and we will um, see what we can do. So I'll delete these off. So as standard, what we want to do just to get going is basically just add one image to the canvas and we want to make that basically full, full size. So we'll make that uh, 1240 by 1844 like that. So this image here is going to be the one that Breeze FX returns. So it's going to be our face swapped image. Now, in addition to that, what we can do is add that image again, but this time we can make it the original photo. So that's basically going to be the photo of me before I was AI processed. And this is how we can sort of achieve this before and after type effect. So if I select use original unprocessed image, and let's just try and get this into a, um, a similar ratio, but we'll scale it down and we'll just pop this down in the bottom corner of the image. So let's OK that, jump back in and run a session and see what we get. All right, take my glasses off. OK, great. So I'll just let that process. That's so going to take about uh, 10 seconds or so to run through that. Okay, so there's the image, and now you can see we have an inset version of myself down the bottom, giving us this sort of before and after effect. So let's see what else we could do with that. All right, we'll jump back into our uh, layout editor, and we're going to come down and right-click on this original image again, and this time I'm going to drop the saturation to zero because I'd like a black and white version of that photo, just to take a little bit of the emphasis off um, off that original image just to make it a bit more subtle. So we'll go ahead and do that and we'll run another session and let's have a look at how that comes out. Okay, so now we've got the black and white version down the bottom. Um, my lighting is a little bit bright, but, um, but otherwise I think it looks quite good in concept um, of just the black and white version of me inset on, on this AI version. What else can we do? Let's get an overlay in there to start bringing this all together and doing something a little bit more useful. So I'll come into our layout. Uh, I'm going to import an overlay. So I've got one on the desktop that I made earlier. All right, so what we've got here is now basically our sort of player card overlay. And I use this one at the Photo Booth Expo in Las Vegas as a demo. Um, so let's see how what we can do with that. So first of all, what we want to do is take this picture here and we want to sort of get it across into here. We'll scale that up and we'll try and position it uh, to fit the box. And we might have to play around with that uh, a little bit for placement. Uh, so this. Uh, main image here I think should be okay so we'll just leave that roughly where it is and we'll okay that and now let's run a session and see what we get okay I'll just give that a second to process All 
All right, so there we go. So we've got the original uh, AI, so the AI version, which maybe could just sit up a little bit higher, and then uh, the photo of me, which could maybe sit down just a little bit lower. So let's just tweak that just a bit. So we might just push that up. It doesn't matter because it's all hidden behind here. Um, and I think I said this one was a bit a bit high, so we can drop that down as well. Now while we're here, let's have a look at something else that we could do. Uh, we could now maybe apply a orange color wash to this one as well, just to tie it in a little bit more of the color theme. So we could say colorize photo and select sort of an orange. Um, now I know that's gonna be probably a bit much, so what we could also do is just drop the opacity of that photo down to about 70%, just to knock the edge off it a bit. So that's going to make that photo of me, the original black and white, then apply a color wash, uh, then just drop the opacity just so it's not so in your face. So let's run that one and see what we get. So there we go, that's a little bit. So what's happened here, because I've dropped the opacity, we're now actually picking up some background elements. Um, so that's a bit of a problem. So let's see how we can fix that because we don't want the stuff that's coming through behind into that picture. So we'll okay that. And we'll use another new feature in Breeze, which is the crop function. So we're gonna say uh, crop. And we basically, we wanna chop off. So at the moment, we're just hiding this picture and you can see that it's it's sitting behind uh, this photo of me we don't want that we want it to finish up here so we're going to say crop photo and we want to crop from the top so we want to start we want to keep from the very top which is zero percent and we want to crop it um, down to probably about um, what does that look like about 75 uh, percent let's see where that gets us Yep, so that's pretty good. So you can see now, we've still got the full bounding box of that image, but the green part, which is where the image itself will be, is now uh, cropped to just about there. So I think if we just push that up a bit where we had it, that should now not be sitting behind uh, that original photo of me. So we should get a better result. So let's just okay that and we'll run another session. Okay, so that's looking better because we're now not picking up uh, that background element um, because of the drop in opacity. Do I love it? Eh, I think it probably just looked better in black and white, but it just goes to show that you've got the, sort of this really fine grained control over all these things. Um, so let's maybe have a look at one more thing that we could do here. We'll just go back into the uh, layout editor and we'll select this main image again and we'll right click on that and edit it. Uh, we could drop the opacity and make that one black and white as well. Um, and if, uh, you know, just for something a little bit different, um, not what I'd probably do in this exact uh, example, but I'm gonna put a little blur on that picture as well. Um, so we're gonna drop the saturation of it, make it uh, black and white. Uh, we'll put a blur on it. Um, and then I just wanna add another caption on top uh, so we'll come over to our um, captions and we'll enab uh, enable caption. Well, it's got this one that says play ball all day. Um, oh, we just want to select. Uh, there you go. We'll select the text, move that back. Uh, we just need to select off it. There we go. And I'm just going to edit that caption because the text is a bit big. Okay, and we might, let's have a look. Yeah, we'll left justified, that's fine. And we'll put it down here. And we'll do something like this. Um, we'll try it with black. So see how we go. All right, so let's just run through another session and see what we get. Okay. 
Okay. So we'll let this process. So the idea is here to sort of just uh, turn that AI process version into more of a background element so we can layer some text over it and have the focus more on the text. Will it work? I guess we'll find out. Yeah, so I think that's sort of okay. Maybe the text should have been white in this case. Um, let's just go ahead and do that and tweak it. I think there's something in this idea. Uh, so we'll select that uh, text. We're going to make it white. Uh, we might actually center justify it. Um, and let's just move it over here. So it is going to be covering my face a bit more, but I think it's sort of just the design part of the des design. I think it'll, it'll, it'll sort of work. Okay, let's have a look. All right, so we'll let this process. Okay, so there you go. So that's quite an in-your-face sort of design, but if you think about a lot of how uh, uh, editorial or uh, advertising type works, this is a, the kind of style that they might actually use where they've got a background image that's sort of blurred out or a bit softer, and then they put big bold text on front of it. So this is a very rough concept, of course, but I could see some real potential here for how you might use this uh, in the real world, so to speak. Uh, any questions, jump into the comments and let me know, but love to see what you guys can do with uh, Breeze FX combined with the, uh, the print layout editor in DSL Remote Pro. Um, all this stuff actually you can also do it in the iPad app, but I will do a separate video for that uh, just because the process is just a little bit different. Um, but yep, any questions, let me know.